What's up, y'all? This is Henny. And you know, the other day I posted a video on my Instagram feed showing just what my studio setup looked like, well, basically what my desk setup looks like at the present moment. And I uh, got a lot of feedback from that. You know, a lot of people are like, damn, Henny, I love the minimalism. I do too. <laughs> So today I'm gonna just break down what I got on this desk, you know, and show you how I'm putting it together and show you exactly how, you know, you can build a minimalistic production slash filmmaking slash whatever you gotta do desk in 2018. You know how I do it, ain't nothing to it, but to do it, you feel me? What am I saying? <laughs> Woo. Let's go. <laughs> So I've done this video before. It was actually in a question and answer video that I did a, about a month or so back. But uh, I'm not sure how many people saw that video. So I wanted to make sure that you guys can get an in-depth look of how I'm setting up my desk. And a few things have changed. Starting here, this is the iRig Keys IO25. It's a MIDI controller that actually has, you know, inputs built in. So in the back you can see, you know, it has uh, inputs for your speakers, inputs for the microphone, and even inputs for the sustain pedal. And I've enjoyed it. I've only had it for a few days, so a review will be coming uh, shortly, but you know, for the most part, this uh, this keyboard is actually pretty dope because um, it has the full keys, it has the full weight of the keys, and it um, works works very well. the uh, The responsiveness of the knobs are on point. You know what I mean? You can you know change the velocity and change the volume of my iRig speakers that I have in the back here. Shout out to IK Multimedia for holding me down. And, um, yeah, I mean, for the most part, getting the job done, making sure that I can get some quick ideas here with 25 keys is pretty clutch. Now, when I did use it, uh, there's a couple options that you can power it. You can, uh, you can power this thing from a battery or you can power it from, um, you know, AC adapter. But what I found is if you use this USB to lightning, USB 3 to lightning um, camera connection kit, you can still power the iPad and power this at the same time. So this is the best cable to use with something like the iRig Keys, given the fact that, uh, you know, if you put batteries in here, you will not be able to, um, you'll not be able to power the iPad as well, or at least charge the iPad while it's working. So that's the iRig Keys, that's the newest thing on the desk. Right here I have an Apple Pencil stand, but it's also a charger. Uh, I'll show everything that I have here on my kit, but you can see I can just take that off. And uh, you have a place for the, the back, and now it's charging. And you know, I love the Apple Pencil for everything that I do with my, with my iPad Pro. So this is an Apple Pencil charger. It works well, and uh, I love the fact that it charges the uh, Apple Pencil as well. Now with my Bose, uh, this is the Bose Sound Mini Micro, about, yeah, Bose SoundLink Micro, I believe. Um, this has a great sound for, for its size, you know, uh, Bluetooth speaker, and I keep it with me. I keep it in my bag, but also when I'm monitoring my music and I want to try to see what it sounds like on a Bluetooth speaker, I use this. And so I'll use this via Bluetooth and play my music through here, see what it sounds like and see what I, what I got going on. I love this. This is the Bose SoundLink Micro. I believe that's what it's called. Over here, this is an old school. This is my iPad 2. Um, and um, what I use this for is to monitor sometimes my uh, GH5. And I'll get to, you know, this stuff in a minute. You can monitor your cameras via Wi-Fi. And I'll just kind of see myself, make sure, you know, I'm in focus, make sure my framing is well. And so I have that here. And um, it works well if I'm doing longer videos and I'll make sure I'm on point. Of course, I got my Google Home Mini. Uh, I love this thing. This controls, uh, you know, the, the, the lights in the house, the temperature in the house. Uh, and we use this. We have one in almost every room in our house. And it is it's pretty dope. Uh, along with that, I have Google Wi-Fi up top there. 
Um, I have Google, I pretty much use Google for a lot of my internet based stuff in the crib. Of course, here's some simple IKEA plants. Gotta keep the feng shui on deck, you feel me? Um, yeah, some more little, you know, nice little thing things. Yeah, I feel. Uh, I got a mic that's plugged in here. This is a, a Behringer mic that I'm using. Uh, just, I love that it's, you know, it was a cheap mic from Amazon, but it still has good quality. And I use it to do like vocal samples and little things like that when I'm sampling into, uh, my iPad. And I just plug that in, uh, straight into my iRig keys right here. My trusty Audio-Technica ATHM 50X headphones. I do not leave the crib without these, uh, when I'm producing. But recently I just picked up these as well. These are the uh, these are the Audio Technica ATH E40s in ear joints, and uh, you know when I want to travel light and I want to travel even smaller and I don't want to fit these in my bag, I'll use these. And these sound really good. I've just you know had them for about a couple of weeks, and man, they have a really they're in ear monitors, but. Um, they sound really good and you can really get some good sounding starting mixes going from these and so I've been using these when I'm on the go and uh, yeah I just keep them in this little thing but all of the monitoring situations that I have is to make sure that I know exactly what my music sounds like on different platforms whether it's a Bluetooth speaker whether it's inner headphones whether it's my normal headphones or even these guys my eye my iLoud monitors and people are asking yo so how do those sound they sound great for their size you know look at my hand right my hand is about this big i don't have the biggest you know man hands or whatever but um you see they're not very big at all but they're portable if you need them to be and um they have a great sound now they're they're low in you know they don't get very low in the in the sub bass but um you know for for thinking about your, your initial mixes and getting that nice balanced sound, they work great. Now, you know, I was wondering, you know, if something like these iRig keys would be any type of replacement for my X-Key Air, and I would say absolutely not, because if you can see the form factor here on my X-Key Air, just how thin they are and how well they fit in the bag, this keyboard fits in a the bag, there's no, uh, there's no comparison in portability. I'll definitely always carry that. Now up top here, people are asking, you know, how do you have this set up? So let me run this down. This is the uh, Rode Video Mic Pro Plus, and it's running a cable. I have a cable here <laughs> running to keep it charged over there in that outlet. And what this was was uh, in our loft here, we had um, we had a TV, right? We had a TV here initially. I took the TV out um, because I just wasn't using it, and. Um, I still had the TV stand here and you know TV stands can hold a lot of weight and so what I did was I took you know this is the Rode um, mic boom arm I believe what that's called and so I connected this and I ran the wires here and then I have a magic arm that connects my uh, Sony R, uh, RX100 Mark V and then that's running down and just recently since I saw a lot of my videos were getting shaky because of that hole where my I, where my tripod was going, my tripod was going right through that hole to try to, you know, manage the vibrations from the desk. It didn't work. I got the new Joby Gorilla Pod. Um, well, it's not new, but new for me. And I wrapped it around, and I'm using that upside down, connected to the Rode Video Mic uh, Pro Plus, and that's how I'm doing the videos now. And uh, it works well, it's balanced well, and uh, it, yeah, it just, it just comes together. And so I have all that, the Rode Video Mic Pro Plus, the, the Sony RX100 for the, for the tabletop down shots, and all of that connected to this, you know, TV stand. So if you wanted a quick fix on how to, you know, get something set up to where you can, you know, top downs and, you know, trying to get your mic placement in a desk setup, Find a wall and find a way to, to mount a TV stand to the wall and start putting stuff to there because TV stands can hold quite a bit of weight. And so I got all of that hooked up there and it works and nothing is touching the desk. So that's pretty much it. That's what's on my desk right now. You know, I got a, uh, you know, all my lights are pretty much Philip Hughes lights. I got my uh, softbox light coming in and 
that is the setup for 2018. Hope y'all can see that. Hope y'all got something from that. If you have any questions about any of the products here, you know, right here up top, it'll be kit.com slash any of the business where you can see all the products and also ask me any questions just to figure out what it is that, um, yeah, you know, if, if what it is you want to go in depth in and, and, and you don't know exactly, you know, how I did a certain thing or hooked up a certain thing. Let me know. I'll be, uh, you know, happy to answer those questions. Well, I hope you got something out of that today. You know, I kind of use some very different methods of putting my stuff together, but you know, it's all about being creative and getting into space and allowing your space to be something that you can consistently get really creative and good ideas out of. But I want to leave you with this. Um, last week I was, I was at an event and I listened to, uh, uh, the artist Beck, uh, speak. It was a one-on-one, -on -one, you know, conversation that he had with the recording Academy. And I took a couple of notes while he was, you know, giving, you know, his one on one and talking about his career, talking about his experience and being in the industry over 20 years. And there was a couple of things that stood out to me and I wanted to at least kind of reflect that on y'all. You know, one of the things he said was you have to remove the fear of being terrible. Let me say that again. You have to remove the fear of being terrible, right? Because I know when I started this YouTube channel, maybe almost you know uh, uh almost a year and a half ago um one of my biggest fears was being on camera you know talking to the camera um and you know i was kind of the guy who played the background most of my early part of my career just making sure that my music and my product spoke for itself i realized like once you remove that fear right of just like some stuff is just gonna suck right when you're in the beginning regardless of what you're doing it's not going to be your best. And, you know, I think we all get stuck at really getting the feedback we need, really getting the uh, criticism we need. And sometimes the, the, the positive affirmations we need when, when we get stuck at, ah, oh, this, oh, it's not good enough. Ah, oh, this stuff, ah, oh, this sucks, you know? Um, and I remember putting up videos and kind of cringing after I pressed that publish button on, on YouTube. And I was like, Oh well, it's out there now. And once you do that over and over again, you start to you start you start to really lose that fear of things sucking and things being terrible and just realizing that it'll only get better over time. So I know a lot of you out there are struggling with maybe sending that first batch of tracks out or you know showing somebody that first script or you know showing somebody that first edit or whatever it is because you don't feel like it's good enough somebody told me it's like you got to figure out what connects you know you can't benchmark yourself against you know what's out there until you put yourself out there and just let go you have to let go and let god move in your situation period like once you just go and you put the work in and you just keep pushing and keep your head down and stay focused things are going to progress and you're constantly going to get better and you're going to improve and um you're just gonna look up one day and be like damn i've gotten a lot better and people are really recognizing that but it all starts with you know removing that fear uh, of being terrible and i love when he said that because i resonate with you know like I, that resonates with me as far as my career as well. And I can tell you, you know, I've, I've, I can see my own growth. If I look back at my first videos and even the personality that I'm able to convey on, on camera now, it's just because my fear is gone, right? Like it is what it is. I'm silly sometimes. I'm thought provoking sometimes, hopefully, or, you know, I'm just trying to hit with, with, with facts and, um, or, or at least my opinion. But I wanted to give you that just to be able to say, you know, you can do this thing, man. Like you can really get your brand, your career, your dreams out there. Once you just start, let go of that fear, put God first and just go. So that's all I got today. Hopefully it was short. We'll see when I start editing this video, how long it goes. Woo. Trying to get these things under 10 minutes, y'all. You know what we do. You know how we do it. I will see you in the next one. <laughs> oh, God. You know what I'm talking about. I'll see y'all next time, man. Thank y'all for subscribing. Thank y'all for watching. Appreciate it. And I'm